And now let me turn to uh, Mr. Chris Darmouti with his vast experience of both policy making and academic, uh, who is going to continue uh, touring uh, this uh, global issue uh, with us. Thank you. Uh, Indonesia is considered to be one of the countries in the world who have a success story in, in combating uh, food insecurity. But I would like to stress that we recognized the problem back in the 60s. We gained our food, relatively food security, after almost 25 years in 85. And we face food insecurity again along the way of our history. So for us in Indonesia, we see that food insecurity is a global problem, it's dynamic, and it's been with us for a while. In 2019, there is about 30% of global populations is lack access to adequate food. Prevalence of moderate to severe food insecurity. And that, even that is not include Indonesia. We see that as always as a threat to our own food security. About 200 million people out that uh, 2.3, 2.5 billion is in food crisis. It's a highly stressed and critical lack of food access with high and above you uh, above usual malnutrition. Now the interesting part of this is 70% of out of these 200 million is in seven countries. Congo, Afghanistan, to Haiti. And the list of that countries remain the same for the last 20 years. So I would like to underline with a previous uh, a speaker has mentioned, we are failing to uh, put this as an our priority and try to solve it. The second point is COVID, the lockdown, global supply chains, uh, disruptions, economic crisis, and now the war put this problem even, even in the bad positions. With the lockdown and uh, uh, supply chain disruptions, there is also refugee on that. 20 million people entering food crisis in just six months. Almost all countries face food inflation more than 5%. Regardless, low, middle, high income countries, all of them experience the same thing. UK experienced uh, 17% of food inflation, Turkey, 90%, just to mention a few. And the paradox of it, the policy response of government is protectionism. My country first, as been mentioned, 19, 20% as banned export, 12%, uh, sorry, 12 countries limiting food export, and that make the problem even worse. And looking in the futures, this is an intermediate futures, and near futures, we will face even a greater problem. The price of fertilizer and fertilizer shortage will make a uh, uh, higher cost of food productions and lowering productivity. And even Ukraine and that part of the world is one of the major food producers. We, I, you know, I just can imagine how, when will be the recovery, uh, production recovery from that part of the world. So the, uh, the impact of the last three years of situations is as follows. 345 million, before it's 200, now become 3, 4, 5 million, immediate danger from acute food insecurity. 820 million go bad hungry every night. Three billion 
entering food insecurity, basically one third of human population. So I think we need to do something more drastic than uh, a business as usual that we already face in dealing with this problem. Not mentioning that climate change has impacted productivity and farmers' ability to produce food. 30% of food productivity increase was cancelled by climate change. And the next 15 years, we will have 1 billion, 1 billion people, 1 billion more mouths to feed. As a recommendation, probably, that we should uh, strengthen global food governance. First, let's ask, do our utmost to resume and maintain open food trade. Build the trust again that food is not something only for business, it's some part of a shared moral obligation, it's a part of humanity. Exclude food trade from any sanction. But in case of the war of Ukraine, maintaining at least the Black Sea Grain Initiative. The second, we need more investment in food system. Our colleague from FAO already laid down about so many issues that re related with uh, food systems, but at the end of the day, we need more resources to put on that system. We need to uh, more investment in te technology for production and logistics. We need more investment in climate resilience, food agriculture. We need to in an investment to empower more uh, human capital, especially on women in agriculture. We need to improve our agriculture infrastructures. And we need also to educate many in our part of the world, knowledge and know-how for food consumption, good food consumption, uh, including uh, reduction of loss and waste. To put on the context, probably we need to broaden the Global Alliance on Food Security that has been initiated by G7, and we need to do more on the practical mode of the, uh, uh, after the recognizing clear message from G20. But that cannot be done without the involvement of private sectors. And how governments should uh, 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 empower businesses to be able to have, of course, a good business in food, but at the same time also solve the problem. Again, as I said, Indonesia is maybe among the few with country with uh, 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 high populations that relatively success in building our own food security. But as long as there is a hunger in the world, that is also a threat for our own food security. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Krisamurti, for this highly valuable contribution and highlighting at, on the same, at the same time the persistence of the issues throughout the years, but also a, a very precise, uh, though long list of concrete proposals uh, about uh, how to uh, proceed uh, from now on. Uh, and let me just highlight it, as you uh, mentioned, uh, the lack of investment as part of the uh, challenge, that the agricultural agenda has not found its real place in public policy, both global and local, uh, in the past decades. Just uh, 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 two uh, numbers or two uh, uh, evidence of, of it. Uh, in Africa, for instance, uh, public spending for agriculture uh, is around 0.5% of the GDP, which is extraordinarily low. And by the way, much lower than the proportion of uh, GDP that uh, OECD countries dedicate to their agriculture, which is, if I'm not mistaken, around 1.5%. Uh, 
But at the level of international support, ODA has also ranked agriculture as nearly the lowest item on its agenda, way lower than health, education, just to mention that, uh, not mentioning uh, infrastructure.